welcome to another episode of Hitch to Hitch. Today, I'm going to start working on the lithium battery install and Victron inverter and all of those components on our new motorhome. So this is a new to us uh, 2001 Newmar Mountain Air. And it has the Xantrax in there, which is the Freedom 458. And then it's got interstate 6 volt deep cycle batteries wired in 12 volts. We're going to do an install to SOK batteries and a Multi Plus 2. I'm going to show you unboxing a few of the things and then um, I'm going to get started. This is probably going to be about a two day project. I'm hoping everything will work out good. But my goal is I'm going to move this panel right here back about two inches and this whole deal here is coming out and i'm gonna mount the new inverter here on this wall uh the batteries run around the back and come in here and then everything runs up through here into the wall and the fuse panels right inside so i got a little bit of work to do um i think i can use most of the existing wiring so that should work out but as you can see these batteries have bulged uh, you see how rusted that is there and corroded and all of that stuff so i think these are getting close to being shot and you can see the date on them so they're at least five years old at this point but uh but that's what we're gonna do um on the other side of the camper is where my uh my transfer switch and my power cable is so it runs across and to the breaker panel and then the breaker panel runs down it has a breaker that runs down to the Xantrax and then it runs up to the sub panel so we're gonna change that up a little bit and I'm gonna bring my power directly to over here to my inverter since the new multi plus two can run everything uh, this is what I ordered got the new multi plus two and I went through continuous resources and I used uh, Thomas and Stacy's link from I'm Not Lost, I'm RVing. They helped me out with that. And uh, they had a good deal for Christmas where you were able to get the, uh, the touchscreen uh, color control and the um, Serbo GX. And all you had to pay was the price of the MultiPlus. So that was pretty awesome. But uh, I got us a shut off switch there's some cables in here and then this is the links distributor and the link shunt so that's what we're going to use for this and uh we'll get it all out kind of set it on the table we're going to start trying to put some of that together and then i'm going to figure out how i'm going to run these wires and um not sure if i'm going to shut the power off and do it today or if i'm just going to try to get prepared and make sure i have everything and uh start first thing tomorrow morning but uh stay tuned we're gonna get going on this here shortly okay well i got most of it out and apparently i'm not gonna get much done today because the weather is not gonna play ball so i had to pick up all of the other stuff we got out i have to close up outside but this is multi plus two so this is how it comes packaged i'm not very happy with the box it got messed up a little bit so hopefully everything's good um got some cables in here to go from the uh from the switch and the links to the inverter uh i got the link shunt that i'm going to use and the distributor and then this is the servo gx and then this is the touch screen which um i have to go and get some stuff done inside with this before i uh before i end up starting the install outside anyway so that's the plan i'm gonna go full with some stuff inside hopefully this rain passes and then i can get this inverter out and maybe start placing some things but that's the plan for now we'll see what happens with this weather so if i can't get anything done today i'll be back with you tomorrow we'll see you later all right so i'm in the back bedroom now and this is where our breaker panel is i pulled this drawer out so this is what i was telling you earlier we have our main panel here and then this is the sub panel and then we've got our 12 volt back there so this line here i need to get down to see if i can 
got to get some light in there. But this line here, I've got to get back out, and that's going to go directly to the inverter, and the new line's going to get ran in. But this is where I'm putting my GX touchscreen. So it's a lot smaller than I actually thought it would be. But that's where it's going to go. I drilled the holes, ran it through the cabinet, and the wire comes out here. So I have it here for now, and that's going to get ran down to where the inverter is outside. So now it's time to go get started outside, try to trace that wire, and then we're going to uh, we're going to pull the old inverter out and see what we can do from there. Whew. Wish me luck. Got to go crawling. I'm going to be seeing colors in my shirt when I get done. Well, it looks like a hardware store run. So, trace the wire. Basically, this is... There we go. Oh, it needs to be cleaned out anyway, but... There's my transfer switch, and then it runs into the wall here, and there's a box. And apparently that runs up over the top through the floor. So there's no way for me to bring that down out the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Go get some more wire and and essentially splice it to another piece and just run that directly down to my uh my inverter and then run one back up so we'll go that route with it but i gotta go get that and a couple other little uh little wires to connect everything so that'll be the next step hardware store visit all right so a quick update on this uh yesterday's adventure out to get parts i needed was unsuccessful so we ended up going out to eat dinner and i didn't do anything else now today figured out that the uh, soks were not going to fit in the battery tray so i had to take the battery tray out and i put this piece of wood in here to kind of uh support it a little better because that that aluminum in there wasn't gonna work it was just gonna sag it was already starting to sag with the two house uh start batteries for the engine so i got the sok in there i got it wired up with the wires that i have i'd have to go out and get some more so that's what i'm getting ready to do i got the inverter installed the link shunt the links i got the servo up there and some wires rerouted so i got a few things uh I got to do and then there's the positive and negative that's going to go to the batteries i don't have that connected yet so i got to go get some more bits and pieces and then uh from there hopefully i can get it on tonight that's the plan but uh i don't know we'll see what happens so off to the store we go hey hey day four of trying to install these batteries when i thought it would only take one uh Long story short, didn't have everything I needed. Went and got it. Cables were too short. Well, they weren't too short. I didn't get enough. And then when I was cutting battery cables, I cut them too short, like eighth of an inch. So that messed me up. So I had to go find more four out lugs, which are very hard to come by these days. Um, then I got the rest of the system installed i haven't got it quite finished but we're ready to start turning power on so we're gonna figure that out but basically oh this right here is what i've narrowed it down to is i'm pretty sure this is my uh starter wire for battery your starter batteries are dead you can use your chassis batteries to jump off your engine and i think that's what wire this is so i need to figure out what amp fuse uh need to put on this to put it on my links or if that's even i don't know worth doing or i need to do a little more research on that so that's why that's taped up and not connected uh got my shut off switch which my batteries come into here they come into the links that's my chassis ground for this side i have another one on the batteries themselves and then i got all my stuff here and it's ran down and then this goes up to my breaker panel so I had to rerun a new wire, which is this one, from my transfer switch on the other side all the way to here because the wire that is inside that went to the breaker panels originally, it goes from the transfer switch on the other side straight up the wall over the ceiling and back down, best I can tell. So there's no way for me to pull that back through and then reroute it. So I got this one and I rerouted it across the top of the frame underneath the camper which is why I'm kind of black. And uh, 
fed it into here. So it comes from a transfer switch to here and then from here up to my breaker panel. So I'm getting ready to connect the batteries for the first time. Then I'll flip the switch on, it should power all of that, be able to power this, and then we'll test shore power afterwards. So let you know how that goes. Wish me luck. All right, this non-professional achieved something. Finally have power. Okay, got the inverter on. And it's kind of hard to see, but my little light's on. My servo's on. The touch screen inside's on. I'm gonna point something out before somebody says something too. See how I got my positive and my negative connected here and I don't have a fuse in between it? That's for the inverter itself. But I have a 400 amp fuse right back there in that, that thing. Right back there already between the batteries and the inverter. So I'm using that for the time being while I'm waiting on that one to come in. But that's a 400 amp that's supposed to go there for the inverter, which is what the manual calls for. And that's a 400 amp in there. So I'm safe there. But uh, I got the power hooked up. And the cable I was talking about a little while ago is this one that I wasn't sure that I need to put on one. I put it on my 60 amp fuse that I have, which I still haven't figured out why I ordered that. I, I don't know. I got it. I think maybe I meant to order the 400 and just didn't change the amperage on it and threw it in the cart. I, I'm not sure. So I'm waiting on my RJ45 cables to go from here to there so that my links will work. And um, that cable turned out to be my 12 volt. So on this camper, they have a uh, battery disconnect and it's called a DJ or I don't know, D something. And that battery disconnect is over here right there is that solenoid so that solenoid is what disconnects and connects the battery and i think that has to do with jumping the wires as well so i connected that after we turned we tried all the power it didn't have any 12 volts so i connected that and it worked but you know this amateur is getting it figured out so this was my new cord that i had to run across and over this is the old one that runs up through the roof and down so i'm gonna mount this in here a little better pull it tight across the top of the engine and do the same thing on both sides do a little bit of cleaning up and uh getting it all right but overall everything's coming together the battery on and off works i've tested that i like good stuff so now that I got a mess out here, I gotta start cleaning up. But uh, I'm no means a professional. If you got any, uh, I guess, any comments don't matter, but uh, any words of encouragement, thank you. Well, <laughs> mama's laughing. <laughs> so come back here, I'm gonna show you. I got the room torn apart. Ah, lights work. But this is where we installed our uh, touch screen. And then here's the breaker panels. So this is my main. This right here is a 3020. So I connected the 30 because it did run down to the inverter previously. I connected it directly to this panel. So this is going to run the secondary panel. So this will have 30 amps. And that one will have the full 50. So anyway... That's what I did, but uh, hopefully this video isn't too long. Hopefully it showed the basics. Uh, like I said, I'm not a professional by no means. Uh, this is a second install I've done. And then next we're going to do solar on the roof. i got to figure out how I'm going to run that down. I have no clue how I'm going to get it from the roof down. I may just put me a cable running down the outside of the camper to do it the easy way. <laughs> so... All right, well, till next time, keep bringing your dreams to your reality.